Water quality and uh, supply problems persist in many communities across South Africa. The recent, uh, the recent uh, deadly cholera outbreak in Hammanskrau has highlighted problems with institutional infrastructure breakdowns, corruption and uh, poor service delivery. One academic is looking at how we can learn lessons from the history of uh, cholera. Those that don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And uh, what happened in the, 19, in the 1830s, it was the early Industrial Revolution. So there were people migrating into the city centers and there were very appalling conditions. And no one had yet made the connection between uh, human health and, uh, and water quality. Uh, there was a, a prevailing belief at the time that uh, illness was caused by bad air, what was known as malaria, which is where, where the word malaria comes from, uh, ultimately. And... Um, the, the, all of the efforts were made to try and, and clean up bad air, uh, what's known as miasma. And uh, it was only in the 1830s that uh, a very, very astute individual uh, published a paper where he did a mathematical uh, uh, model that proved that uh, the first cholera outbreak uh, was associated with one particular site, uh, one particular well in London, and that well was directly contaminated with sewage. And it took four subsequent, or sorry, three subsequent uh, cholera outbreaks to eventually get that accepted as mainstream. So we now can accept from the 1850s onwards, we can accept that there's a direct causal linkage between uh, human, uh, human fecal material in drinking water and cholera. We don't have to reprove that wheel. It's, uh, but what it did was it changed changed the fundamental thinking of water supply and sanitation in the city of London and it propelled them into a, a, an accelerated industrial revolution future because with human health now under control they could start uh, uh, harnessing all of the benefits of rapid industrialization and economic benefit for all. It also showed that if you, you know, if you don't listen carefully and closely, um, you know, there'll be a significant uh, repeat and loss of life um, that could have been ultimately avoided. And as you read, you know, this, this piece of yours, what does it tell, what would you like, you know, South Africans to know about what it's telling us about the 2023 cholera outbreak? I think the important thing about the 2023 cholera outbreak is that it is a potential game changer. And the reason why I say it's a potential game changer is up until now, we've known about, about corruption. We've known about uh, you know, all of the bad things that happen, but we've tended to kick the can down the road because uh, many people think it's kind of a victimless crime. But now we have more than 30 people that are dead and, and growing. So for the first time, smart forensic investigators are, are currently working on establishing a causal link between those deaths and, and corruption, for example. So, so that is a potential game changer because there's a, a legal principle in South Africa, uh, the one that, uh, that, that put Oscar Pistorius in jail called Dallas Eventualis. And uh, that can very easily be applied in this case as well because uh, it can, an, an astute uh, legal team can argue yeah. in the court of law that that particular action back there, for example, to try and hijack a, uh, you know, a, a, a contract or something of that nature has now resulted in, uh, in the loss of life. So I think for that reason alone, it's a game changer. Yeah, and, and, and you, you know, you make reference to uh, the concept or, you know, the, the, the principle of Occam's razor to talk about, you know, in, in this complex environment where there's so many, you know, th uh, theories about what could have gone wrong, what the genesis of the cholera outbreak was, is to go back to the, the most simplest, simplistic, the most simplistic or the simplest substantiated facts to prove uh, what the cause is. And in this regard, you talk and you make particular reference to the water tankers and whether indeed they are filling from approved sources or from contaminated bodies of water. Spot on, I'm so glad you read my piece because you got it exactly. So, so what we've seen in KZN, for example, is that uh, water tanker operators, uh, they are they're part of a syndicate. They actually uh, damage the infrastructure the, uh, deliberately in order to get the contracts to deliver water. But then they have to get their water from a standpipe that's supplied by the municipality. But now there's only one standpipe and maybe 20, 20 tankers that have to fill up at the one standpipe. So they have to stand in that queue for maybe many, many hours. So what they do is they go and fill up with water from the river. And if that water is contaminated, for example, in the Arpis River from the Royval Wastewater Treatment Works, where we know for a matter of fact, it's an empirical fact, we know that they've been dumping a, a sludge in a wetland there for a long, long period of time. So there's, there's, there's your empirical connection right there. But people aren't investigating that at the moment. So the, you know, the, the piece that I wrote was just to try and nudge the investigation along into, you know, into a more logical uh, direction.